It's a power hour here at uh, the Voice of College Football, but courtesy Carter. The real power hour is right here on YouTube, courtesy this guy. Get on over to his channel, uh, Carter and his power hour of LSU football. Man, what's going on today? It's good to see you. Uh, it's, it was a great weekend when it comes to LSU football, right? It's so weird because we're so used to like spring games and it's not a whole lot of stuff going on and who's actually playing, who's not. But Mark, the big news this past weekend was Joe Burrow, Clyde edwards Hilaire, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, all the legends uh, from that 2019 team was there. And uh, that was the first time that they've all – been back on campus, I believe. So uh, that that's pretty nuts. And that does a lot for your recruiting because LSU had an absolutely massive recruiting weekend with uh, Dante Moore. And, you know, it, it, what's really funny, Mark, is that you have a national show, right? So you have a bunch of Notre Dame fans that listen and you have a bunch of Michigan fans that listen, right? And Dante Moore is the, the guy for them. That's their number one quarterback. He's from Michigan. He's connected to Notre Dame and now Brian Kelly. So that's going to be the recruiting battle that's going to make the vitriol between Notre Dame and the LSU fans go even up. So it's uh, uh, go even up even more than what it already is. So it's it's fun, man. Don't you just love it, Mark? The vitriol between fan bases that will probably never play in the re in the near future. It's just fun. And yeah, we see that with the traditional rivalries all the time, but this is the off season and we see it more so than at any time that I can think of because of those two major moves of Brian Kelly and with Lincoln Riley, where, yeah, these fan bases that have no connection otherwise are suddenly at each other's throats and they're fixated on the other school and the other coach. So that's what we're dealing with. You know, Brian Kelly, while you bring it up, I see video and pictures of him now. It looks like LSU's been good for him. He looks thin. He looks healthy. He looks like, man, he he found the fountain of youth down there. $100 million, a nice house on a lake, uh, uh, less than a mile from campus. Hey, Baton Rouge is a beautiful place. There's just no other way around it. But, you know, it, it, it's funny because it, the spring game was so different for LSU than it was for other teams. Mark, they had an offense versus defense instead of the normal. You split the team up half and half. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, it's, it was a little different. But overall, you're right. And BK does like does it like a new man. He's going to these golf tournaments. He went to the Zurich Classic. Uh, he's doing the political stuff about LSU football really well. And that's something – you know, when he was hired by Scott Woodward, that was something that everyone knew he was going to do well because of Brian Kelly's background in politics. So it's it, it's crazy, but it seems like he, he's fitting in. But as you know, Mark, it just comes down to wins and losses in the grand scheme of things. Folks, we got Carter here from LSU Power Hour. So head on over there, but uh, check out the work that we're doing right here with Carter. We appreciate him stopping by to break things down. You know, you told me a number of times during the offseason leading into spring practice, you were like, this football team, like this is the least recognizable LSU football team I've ever seen. I don't know who's going to be where. The, they, they just got a bunch of players they got to sort out. So now that they've been through 15 sessions in a spring game, what it, what have you sorted out? What, what starts to come together now? Well, obviously the big news is the quarterback battle. And that's the number one question you get. That's the number one question I get, right, as far as LSU is concerned. So this last weekend, so on our channel, we do like these deep, film breakdowns of this play or that play. I won't do that here. So if that is your kind of stuff, go over there. I won't get into the X's and O's now. But all four of the LSU quarterbacks threw touchdown passes. All four of the LSU quarterbacks did not throw interceptions. Now, Mark, that was somewhat by design because LSU did not play any exotic coverages. Very rarely did they do anything outside of man coverage with two high or one high safety. So, just to use an analogy, it was kind of like batting practice, right, for the quarterback. They knew a fastball was coming. They knew the coverage. So it led to very explosive performances. But by far, the guy who had the most zip on his passes, the guy who had the best day was Garrett Nussmeyer. And that's a very interesting thing, Mark. Of the four quarterbacks, Garrett Nussmeyer was by far the favorite to transfer out of the four. Now we don't know what's going to happen. 
And, you know, there was so much news about Miles Brennan coming back to LSU. And then you have Jaden Daniels transferring over from Arizona State. And Jaden had an up and down, but very productive career at Arizona State. And then, of course, Walker Howard, uh, the first top 50 quarterback in the state of Louisiana since Ryan Perlou. Um, he had a bunch of hype coming in. Uh, one of LSU's best receivers was his teammate in high school, Jack Besh. So nobody was really talking about Garrett Nussmeyer. And this was a top 100 quarterback who's the son of a longtime offensive coordinator who was amidst a very interesting controversy at the end of the year regarding his red shirt. It, 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 this is a point I, I just kept making Mark uh, on the channel. So we do like spring breakdowns and whatnot. If you strip everything away from the quarterbacks, what you know about their recruiting rankings, what you know about their career stats, what you know about them and their experience, and you just looked at them and you just went out and saw the quarterbacks just practice, you would think Garrett Nussmeyer was the best because his arm does right now look like it has the most pop. His balls were more accurate than the other players' passes. But then at the same time, he did get a little bit of interception luck. And the big thing here, Mark, is Jaden Daniels' mobility. That is something that really sets him apart. His mobility is special, whereas the other quarterbacks, they have some outside of Miles Brennan. Uh, but but that's the thing. Jaden and his dual threat ability is something that LSU is really going to want to capitalize on. So I, I think right now Jaden is still right in the middle of it. Three man race, right? And Walker Howard's just kind of like yeah. develop, get yourself ready, make a big push in twenty three. Right. Yeah, okay. that's what it, that's what it looks like right now. And look, Walker's very talented. He kind of knows his situation, so he's not going to be one that's going to be like, "Oh, I'm not playing." Whatever. No, he's in it for the long haul, and he'll battle Garrett Nussmeyer next year for that starting quarterback role. But this is, and everyone knows this. You have diehard college football fans that watch your stuff every day. The transfer portal is the same for everyone, and it's in particularly a big deal for LSU because this is just how it's going to be. Now, Mark, I don't have any inside information. I Let me put it this way. Now with the way college football is, if I'm an assistant coach and I am watching the LSU spring game, and for those that don't know, coaches – have assistants and analysts that watch all these other spring games that keep an eye on everything else that's going on in college football. If I'm an assistant coach and I see Garrett Nussmeyer balling out, which he did once again, coverages are really simple, but he, he looked really good. I'm going to be like, look, if this kid wants to play now and I am at another power five school or non power five, I, I can find some way to get in contact with somebody and say, look, Garrett Nussmeyer looks really good, and he would be the best quarterback in our room right now. I don't know if that's happening. I guarantee you there is some of that happening. It might not be at LSU. It might be at other schools. That's just how it is now. And it, it, it's crazy because all four of those quarterbacks, Mark, showed me something this past weekend. Now, does that mean that they're going to be an all-SEC starter next year? No, because the SEC has a really talented group of quarterbacks going in to next year. But – that's just how it is. If Nuss is the QB3, I, I'll, I'll say this, Mark. He would be the QB1 at a lot of schools right now. I guarantee you, uh, especially with what happened at Ole Miss this past weekend, Lane Kiffin would be like, God, he, he'd be the best guy in my room right now. Uh, there's a lot of schools that would say that right now by Garrett Nutzmeyer. So it's a, it's a really fascinating quarterback battle. It's a very deep quarterback battle, and we'll, we'll see what happens, uh, and we'll go from there. I can think of a school in the Pac-12 that uh, used to be quarterbacked by an LSU quarterback right now. <laughs> They've got a couple inexperienced quarterbacks going at it right now. They got no yeah. production coming back. That would be for the taking, I believe. We got uh, Carter here, LSU Power Hour. Get on over there right here on YouTube, favorite audio platform, to uh, check out Carter's work. Did mm. anybody else pop? Is there a guy on either side of the ball that uh, besides the quarterback position that you're thinking, man, I'm higher on this dude or these two or these three than I was three or four weeks ago before spring started? Yeah, I, I, I could say this comfortably, Mark. So in a few months, actually, I'm starting an SEC general challenge channel. channel. I, I like keeping up with the rest of the SEC. I keep up with what's happening at other schools. But I, I feel comfortable saying that LSU's got the best receiving room in the SEC. Their receivers are amazing. And obviously, they did not have Kayshawn all spring. And Kayshawn is by far the best receiver in the SEC. So, outside of Kayshawn, their room is stacked. 
And it's not only that they're stacked, Mark, they're young. A bunch of true sophomores in that room. Obviously, Jack Besh is the first name that you mentioned. He had a big spring game. But, I mean, he, he was one of the best true freshman receivers ever at LSU last year. And Malik Neighbors can also say the same thing. He was amazing last year. Both those guys come back, and that doesn't include – Brian Thomas Jr. and Jeray Jenkins, who are also going to be a big part of that offense. And they even have two other guys, uh, Kyron Lacey and Chris Hilton, who are, are who are guys that are very talented as well. So, Mark, the bottom line is, if you want to talk about elite groups, now, I am wearing my 2019 National Championship shirt. I don't know if they're that good with Jets and Chase, but I'll say that they can get close to being that good uh, because it's just amazing what LSU does at receiver every year. It's one thing that they are known for the most. Now, the position that they are not known for as well as other positions is offensive line. And it looks as if they're going to start a true freshman at left tackle. And the rest of the line is going to be up in the air. It could be two transfers at guard with Tremont Shorts and uh, Frazier. But really the story this entire spring, Mark, is the left tackle Will Campbell, a true freshman, top 50 recruit at a Neville, a North Louisiana school. He's been phenomenal. And, you know, Mark, you know, in college football, especially at the Power 5 level, starting true freshman on the offensive line, when you have these Will Andersons and you have these Dallas Turners out there, it's a daunting task. It's really hard. But Will has lived up to the hype. He's even exceeded the hype. He's put on good weight. You could just see his leadership. You could see how he attacks every single rep, and it helps that you're going up against Mason Smith, Ali Gay, and a bunch of really talented defensive linemen, B.J. Ojolari as well. It, it, it gets you better, and, and Will's been the star of spring. We'll see. Hopefully it turns out to be a, a Cam Robinson situation at Alabama where you get him as a three-year starter and, and, and build your offensive line around him. Carter, Thursday's the NFL draft. Uh, you mentioned a bunch of guys that uh, have – been able to build instant legacy status, uh, legend status, like Joe Burrow and the rest of the cast from 2019 coming back. And that's pretty rare when uh, within three years you're a legend, but uh, they have cemented their lore in college football history. So we move on to the next wave going into the NFL draft. Uh, who's coming off the board? What are your thoughts about um, how many go for the Tigers? So obviously the story is going to be Derek Singley Jr. And he is probably the most fascinating player in this first round, right? If you just take Stingley's 2019, he's a top five pick. But you have all these extra things surrounding him, right? He's been very hurt. He has had a bunch of bizarre injury situations. Um, and he also is very quiet, right? Derek Stingley is not Tyron Matthew. He's not Patrick Peterson. These really affable, big personalities. Of course, Peterson has a big time podcast and is a future Hall of Famer. Tyron Matthew is the most interesting defensive back arguably ever in college football, not only on the field, but off the field with what he does. Derek Stingley is unlike the other big time defensive backs and first round prospects because he is very soft spoken. He is to himself. And, you know, it, it's a little weird for for LSU fans because you're used to the defensive backs being huge personalities and NFL teams are wondering that themselves that's why Brandon Staley flew in for the pro day that's why so many coaches and scouts were zeroed in on Stingley because him at his peak is a missing piece from a championship team right I think that's why Staley really flew in to to see it because he's like look we're the Chargers we're close to winning the Super Bowl if we could find a lockdown corner like Stingley was immediately for LSU in 2019, that could be the missing piece. For me, Mark, I really hope he goes to a contender. I actually hope he does slide. Of course, you know, as an LSU fan, you want him to go as high as possibly can, get more money and all that stuff. But I think going to a good locker room situation would be really good for Derek Stingley. Whereas if he goes to Houston in a rebuilding phase, it's a little bit different, right? Because that is more so what 2020 and 2021 LSU was, which was a lot of losing, a lot of locker room dysfunction, a lot of chaos. So, you know, for me, is he going to go before Sauce Gardner? I don't know. Could he slide below Kyir Elam? I don't think so, but I could see that potentially happening. I don't. You look at the betting markets, Mark, 
12 and a half, 13 seems to be where, you know, the over under is for him, man. If I'm a contender, I'm taking that chance, right? Cause him at his peak is, is pretty good. Yeah. And there's not too many of those guys that can uh, lock it down on one side of the field like he did. Yeah. In that championship season. All right, folks, LSU fans, you know who he is. Uh, everybody else that loves college football, head on over to uh, Carter's channel right here on YouTube, LSU Power Hour. Appreciate you being here, man. As always, it's always a good time and uh, breaking things down for us. Yeah, man. It, Mark, it's a great time, man. It's college football. I I, I know us diehard college football lifers, uh, people like you and me that have the stubble, we're wearing the black shirts. We, we, college football just <laughs> loves to be somber now. What is going to happen with this sport and the name, image, and likeness and the transfer portal? We touched it's on it. It's doomed. Today. Yeah, it's doomed. It's horrible. And yes, look, there's a lot of stuff surrounding the sport that make us go, okay, what's it going to look like in five years? Is there going to be a super conference and all that stuff? Just enjoy it. It's still great. NFL draft is still great. College football is still great. Who cares if we touched on this with the Nussmeyer thing earlier? I don't think that is, I don't know what's happening with each and every player, but to think right now that there's not coaches talking to other coaches saying, Hey, you know, you know, we had this school that is in, and, and that's, it's not just quarterbacks, Mark. It's, it's everything. Who cares that there's a little bit of change? I, I I'm, I'm fine with it. It is going to get out of control and might already be out of control now, but look, I still love it, baby. We're, we're going to be fine, Mark. I just feel like, and I know you've touched on it on your channel. We just got to take a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out. College football will be here, 130-something days. Let's go, Mark. Let's go. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much.